2022 Porsche 911 GT3 Road Atlanta. Today we're going to do what no one in, in the US at least has done so far. We're going to push this $160,000 GT3 on a proper racetrack. 2.54 miles of Georgian heaven. Now for the first 20 seconds, I'm just going to shut up. Enjoy. we're going to tell our grandchildren that this was peak internal combustion. No turbo, no hybrid, just art. Before we get back onto the circuit, let's discuss our charge. The GT3 is really a car without an obvious rival. Track-focused Exotica from Italy or the UK cost dramatically more, and we're yet to see bonkers versions of the mid-engine Corvette. Philosophically speaking, the most obvious alternative comes from the same camp, the Cayman GT4, which Carlos track tested for us a few weeks back. Sounds so good. In the GT4, you get a flat six mounted in the middle, developing 400 horsepower. In the GT3, you get a four litre flat six, developing 502 horsepower and located here in the derriere. Now, Ferrari and even Chevy like to show off their engines, but Porsche, not so much. That's your lot. You do though get to massage your ego with this huge comedic rear wing, which will no doubt be a big hit down your local cars and coffee. For the first time on a GT3, you get what Porsche is calling these swan neck uprights or mounts, if you like. The idea is that you can smooth out the airflow underneath the rear wing compared with a more traditional mounting system. You can also adjust it. All you need is an Allen key and you can just the angle of attack to provide more downforce at the rear if you're heading out on the circuit like we are today. And to balance all that rear downward thrust, you can also adjust the front end and there's lots of detail aero work going on underneath too. The latest generation 992 911 is a bigger car than its predecessor and absolutely huge compared with 911s of old. That's one of the biggest criticisms on the road, but huge efforts have been made to keep the weight in line with the old one. The hood and rear wing are made of carbon fiber reinforced plastic. There's lightweight glass for the windows, a skinny exhaust system, and even a new battery that alone saves 22 pounds. Never let it be said that Porsche's engineers don't sweat the details. I've driven every GT3 since the original 996 of the late 90s, and this is definitely the most focused. Honestly, I think it looks more like a GT3 RS than, than a standard car. I think it looks great as long as you're not too self-conscious. The only thing I don't like are these, these sort of two-tone wheel rims. I mean, imagine curbing those, but hey, you know, they're an option anyway. It is properly humid in Georgia, so apologies for the um, visual sweat bath. They never let me run with the air conditioning on when I'm filming, so you know, suffering for my art. Anyway, back to the car and back to the interior. This is pretty much standard 992 generation 911 fare, but it has been enlivened by a few GT3 details. First and foremost, the silly little electric razor style stick in the Carrera has been replaced by a much more satisfying gear stick. Now, this is actually the PDK, although there is a six-speed manual version and available as a no-cost option. And if you get bored of the flappy paddles up here, you can actually rock this lever to and fro to change up and down, which I think is a really nice touch. These fabulous carbon fiber bucket seats are a six grand option, but they save a load of weight. And apparently more than 50% of GT3 buyers in the US actually choose them. But you know, be careful on the burgers if you do. What you still can't get though on a GT3, even as an option, which I think is a real shame, is rear seat. Instead, you get a, a bunch of luggage space to complement the useful frunk. As a two seater, this is a really practical car. You also get a ton of GT3 badges for your money. We've counted 11, and to be honest, we probably missed a couple. Again, another huge win down cars and coffee. If you'd like to know more about every 911, or in fact, 
every car on sale today, go to Edmunds.com. And if you want to cash offer for your current car, head to Edmunds.com slash sell my car. Let's get back to the action. I really admire that Porsche isn't bothering with the horsepower race. It's dead simple. 400 horsepower for a GT4, 500 for a GT3, then likely 700 for a GT2 when it finally arrives. Rivian is about to launch an electric truck that will probably be faster in a straight line for half the cash. But frankly, who cares? Porsche says this car will do zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. And honestly, they tend to be pessimistic. It is more than fast enough. And as we found out when we drag raced a 340 horsepower Carrera against a 760 horsepower Mustang GT500, it's not how many ponies you've got as much as, you know, how well they're trained and how you sort of whip them into shape. This is stable under braking, second gear into this little chicane. Changes direction so well. Man, this is a full on circuit, it really is. 6,000 RPM, 7,000, 9,000 RPM, 130 miles an hour. Woo! What a thing. Breaking downhill. Turning into the chicane, is coming up. Flick left, flick right, back on the power, easing in. Woo! This thing sounds so good. Big change on this car compared to the old one is Porsche have ditched the McPherson strut suspension you get on a normal Carrera and replaced it with double wishbone. Now, without wishing to get too geeky, what that basically means is that you get more front end stability and a keener turning. And believe me, it really works. Oh, man alive. You can see by just like how hot and sweaty I am. This is a car that makes you earn it. It's a, it's a physical car because it's so fast, there's so much downforce, there's so much lateral grip. But why would you want to spend the best part of $200,000 on a car and it, it not be a challenge? And what I like about this car is it's not intimidating. This is a pretty hairy, no, it's not a pretty hairy racetrack. This is a very hairy racetrack that honestly I haven't driven before. So there's a lot to take in. It's a lot of car. It's a lot of circuit, but this thing feels like it's forgiving of some of my mistakes. And yeah, as you push it harder and harder, your, your margins reduce and reduce. But for something with this much performance and this much kind of motorsport intent, it's a pretty forgiving tool. And I like that. We're also running on a Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 R tire now. That is basically a track day tire. Yes, you could drive it on the road, it's road legal. But Michelin reckons it's about two to three seconds a lap faster around here than the standard Sport Cup 2. But it is a track day special. It's gonna, and, it, and if it rains? As you can see, I'm not really bothering with the flappy paddle gearbox. It's actually so good at just doing its thing on its own, which allows me to concentrate on the driving. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a manual, but if I was buying this as a track day tool, I'd buy the PDK, I really would. It's also really nice to drive a 911 at speed with proper gear ratios. It's not as sort of stupid long between second and third as it is in a normal Carrera. This is, these are beautifully spaced and you've actually dropped the overdrive eighth gear. This is just a seven speed box, beautifully spaced, just wonderful the little sweeper, line it up, down the hill, hard on the brakes, feeling those carbon ceramics. So stable. This car is the optional ceramic brakes, which are about a $9,000 option. Now, not only do they provide massive stopping power, particularly if you're out on a circuit like this, but they also really reduce the unsprung mass, which again, without wishing to get sort of massively geeky about it, is basically what you want. Just Trust me on that. Ooh. Feed the throttle, feed the throttle. Remember, it's still a 911. But this thing does give you lots and lots of confidence. Take a bit of curb. The steering is exquisite. When these electrically hydraulic assistants first came along, we all, 
we all said how bad they were compared to the old hydraulic systems you used to get in like a, a 997, but my God, they've got better. Just the confidence that it gives you, it's just sensational. Honestly, I'm having so much fun. Some of that is just the noise. When the world turns electric and this may be the last GT3 we have. God, I'm gonna miss this. Sell the house, buy one. So that was a full on day. I'm pretty exhausted, but what a day. I think guys like me are gonna talk a lot in the next few years about this being you know, the last chance, the end of an era, enjoy it while you can, all those cliches. But honestly, with the GT3, probably true more than of almost any other car. If this is the last GT3 that Porsche ever produces, then they've certainly gone out on a high. They've really thrown the kitchen sink at it. I used to talk at dinner parties when you get asked that tedious question, what was the best car you've ever driven? I used to say 911 GT3 RS 4 liter. But you know what? I think this is even better. $160,000 as MSRP. Probably by the time you get the options you want on it, it's over 180,000 if you can get one. Honestly, I think these are gonna change hands for a lot more than that. So what would I have? Well, if I was a track day warrior, I'd have this spec with a big rear wing and a PDK gearbox. If I wanted one for the road, then I'd probably wait for the Touring and go with the stick. But hey, it'd be nice to have the choice. What a day. Epic, really. If you'd like to know more about every 911, or in fact, every car on sale today, go to edmunds.com. And if you want a cash offer for your current car, head to edmunds.com slash sell my car.